Welcome everyone to the Easy Drummer 2 overview tutorial. Now, I originally attempted to film this tutorial on the day that I purchased Easy Drummer 2, and in running through the program, I ended up filming far longer than I intended to, just because there's quite a bit of depth to this program, and it's a lot of fun to use. Now, the fact that I had to film an overview again and make it much, much shorter. And the fact that I'm using my original recording as a part of my detailed tutorial series is really just a testament to this plugin and how much it has going for it, how much functionality and depth it has, and really how fun it is to use. So that said, you'll wanna keep an eye out for the detailed tutorial series for Easy Drummer 2. But again, in this video, we're just going to cover the general overview and basics of this plugin. Now, when you open up Easy Drummer 2, this is what you see. Easy Drummer ships with two brand new libraries, and the drum kit that you are looking at right now is the modern library. If I go up to the upper right hand corner, I have a drop down menu much like I did in Easy Drummer 1, and these are the two libraries that come with Easy Drummer 2 it's the modern and the vintage. So those are the two libraries that come with Easy Drummer 2. Now we'll talk about this menu a bit more here in a moment, but for now let's start at the very top of the screen on the left hand side and move to the right. You can see that the Easy Drummer 2 interface is broken up into various tabs. We have the drums tab, which provides the behind the kit view, much like you would see in Easy Drummer 1. We of course can click on any drum to audition an individual instrument. We can also use a MIDI controller of some kind, for example, a keyboard. And we have the same drop down menus that you had in the original Easy Drummer. However, if we open up those drop down menus by clicking on the arrow, the instrument properties panel is quite a bit different. Here, we can select any drum, in this case the snare drum, contained in the Easy Drummer 2 Modern Library. So if I want a different drum, I can simply choose which drum I would like. I can audition each of these drums by clicking on any one in this list. I can audition by using the up and down arrows here, the bottom left hand portion of the properties window. And I can also use the velocity pad to audition not only the individual instrument itself, but the velocity range as well. Now within this window, I can change the individual pre-fader volume for any selected instrument, as well as the pitch. This is going to adjust the pre-fader volume and pitch for the entire instrument, including all individual articulations. Easy Drummer 2 does not allow you to adjust the volume and pitch of individual articulations independently. That function is reserved for Superior Drummer 2. In the upper right hand corner, you have the addition of new percussion pads within Easy Drummer 2, and these allow you to quickly add percussion elements into your drum track. Within each of these percussion pads, we have a drop down menu so that you can choose various elements. We have single and group claps, snaps, a cowbell, we have various shakers, and various tambourines. And within each of these percussion elements, you can also adjust the pre-fader volume and the pitch as well. 
If we move to the browser section, this is very much like the original Easy Drummer, where you have your parent MIDI library folder, which then will break down into various categories such as time signature, genre, tempo, and so on. And then of course you can audition any of the grooves within this browser window. You have a user MIDI section whose folder structure you can actually modify. So that way if you have your own MIDI or third party MIDI grooves, or you just want to remember MIDI grooves that you've found and put them in a place that you can easily use, you can create a number of MIDI folders for these occasions. Simply right click on the user MIDI folder, say add folder, label it, and drag your MIDI groove into that folder. Now just like with Easy Drummer 1, you can drag any MIDI groove into your DAW, or you can also drag it down into the drum track, which we have not yet talked about. Easy Drummer allows you to edit and manipulate the MIDI within the plugin itself, allowing you to create an entire drum part without the need for an external host. I can even record into the drum track or song track using an external controller. Now if we jump over to the search tab, here's where things start to get interesting. From here, we have several new intuitive ways that we can find the MIDI we're looking for. Rather than use the browse menu and just search endlessly through all of your MIDI files, you can use filters within the search window to include or exclude any criteria to drill down to the MIDI that you're looking for. For example, I could search only the MIDI within the modern library, exclude any jazz and blues, include the funk genre, and grab any hi-hat closed. So now the MIDI list is much shorter and the MIDI that you are looking for now matches the criteria that you wanted. Now in addition to that, we have a new feature called Tap to Find, which is a great new feature that allows you to tap out the idea that you may have in your head. You can click on any individual drum, or you can use an external controller. You can also adjust the tempo if you need to slow things down or speed them up to make it easier to tap out your idea. With every pass, Easy Drummer 2 will quantize the rhythm that you tap out. You can adjust the quantize value within this drop-down menu. Now in this case, I just tapped out the kick drum and the snare drum. I don't have to include the hi-hat. I could if I wanted to. So then Easy Drummer will search all available MIDI to find any relevant matches for the groove that you tapped out. So this allows you to quickly find any MIDI grooves that are in line with the basic idea that you have for a song. At this point, we can take the MIDI groove that we tapped out or any other groove that we found through the various methods I've just discussed, and we can drag them into our song track. Now from there, we can keep bringing in other MIDI parts, or we can take any groove that we came up with, use the song creator, drag that MIDI from our song track or from anything that we've selected in the search or browser menu. And if we put it into the MIDI drop zone for the song creator, it's gonna get analyzed and then make available various MIDI grooves within different song parts that match the MIDI groove that you've put in the drop zone. So this is the MIDI groove we dropped in. Now any of these song sections should match well with those grooves. And this allows you to quickly be able to pull in various song sections and put together a song very quickly. If you'd like to create a song quicker than that, you can use the predefined song structures and simply pull in that entire song structure or click on this drop-down menu and choose load structure onto track. 
Now we have an entire drum track based on the MIDI groove that we placed in the song creator and conveniently color coded so we know what section we're looking at. From here, we can grab the entire drum performance or any individual portion of that song track and manipulate the performance by going into the edit play style. We can do this by double clicking any groove or portion of the song, right clicking and choosing edit play style or clicking on this icon within the groove itself. Within the edit play style window, you can adjust various components of the groove on the fly. For example, you can quickly change whether the main driving force of the groove is the hi-hat or the ride cymbal or maybe even another drum by moving the power hand. You can adjust the articulation used within the power hand itself. You can also adjust any individual drum or the entire performance itself and add complexity using the amount knob or just the overall velocity of any individual instrument or the entire performance. Now the amount knob and the velocity are based on a complex algorithm that the Easy Drummer developers came up with. Rather than just add or subtract MIDI notes and velocity amounts, it's actually intelligently trying to assess and determine what a real drummer would do based on analyzing thousands of MIDI drum performances. So it will intelligently add or subtract complexity in a very realistic way. Once you have your song form the way you want, you can go into the mixer and adjust various channels just like you could in Easy Drummer version 1. You have panning, solo mute, as well as various outputs. Now what's new in this mixer window is the fact that you have additional channel options as well as effects chains. For example, we're currently in the modern library and utilizing the basic preset. This is what Easy Drummer will default to when you open it up. And these are all the mixer channels and the effects chain that you will see within this preset. Each preset has its own set of mixer channels and effects chains. Now the effects chains themselves are based on complex effects and routing from the Easy Mix 2 product, but they're streamlined for very simple controls. As you click on each individual effects chain knob, you can see the channels that they will affect. You can also click on individual faders within each channel of the mixer itself, and it will show you if it's linked to any effects. Now another nice feature within Easy Drummer 2 is the fact that you can pull up the original mix of not only the modern and vintage libraries, but also of any installed EZX as well. For example, if I go down to the Nashville kit, I can pull up the original mix. Or I can pull up new mix presets based on the effects chains of Easy Drummer 2. So that means all of your previously purchased EZX libraries will now have new presets for you to utilize. Lastly, Easy Drummer 2 has various eDrum functions to allow better integration with electronic drum controllers. You can choose a general manufacturer for whichever drum module you are using, and then you can also utilize predefined pedal correction presets if you find that your pedal response for your hi-hat is not performing as you would expect. Now that's it for this overview tutorial. I went through the functions very, very quickly because there's quite a bit of functionality within this plugin. It's a major update from the original Easy Drummer and we will be spending some time digging into the various features in other tutorial videos. So you'll wanna keep an eye out for those on my website, drumangle.com. Thanks for watching.